Hey, what's up guys? Chris here with Cunningham Woodwork. Uh, I recently took the family to Disney uh, to uh, you know spend some time on vacation and I decided to be a nerd and get a, a Star Wars lightsaber. I've been a huge fan of Star Wars pretty much my whole life and um, my wife finally said just quit talking about it just get it. So I brought it home and uh, I wanted to mount it on the wall in my office. And so I kind of thought about some ideas and decided on picking a piece of zebra wood and some walnut and uh, just kind of wing it and come up with a mount of some sort. I kind of looked at some ideas online and just kind of came up with this idea on my own. So here I'm cutting the walnut down to a couple of even squares uh, and I'm going to use the bandsaw again and I'm going to cut tenons on the ends of these. So I kind of recorded this backwards. So I cut the uh, drilled the holes for the mortises and then I cut the tenons but really I cut the tenons first just to make sure that I sized everything up so that my mortising bit would match up and everything so it's kind of backwards but you can kind of see what I'm doing so here I'm cutting the uh, shoulders off uh, and I do this twice uh, and then you'll see that I'm going to start chiseling around the edges of the uh, mortised holes And I'm not a big hand tool woodworker. I, I enjoy them and uh, I wish I was a lot better at it. So, um, you know, I just kind of drew a line and chiseled to it the best I could. Uh, and they ended up just fine in the end. But, you know, I'm not going to show a whole lot of chiseling because I'm no master of it or anything. But as you can see by this fit, I did get it pretty, pretty darn close. And I have to apologize for the flickering video. I accidentally had this on slow-mo and it was kind of catching the fluorescent lights, um, kind of flickering. So um, I think my kids got to my phone and were playing with it. So uh, don't worry, it's just these two clips. So if you can bear with me, uh, I'm just drilling a hole halfway through one of these and all the way through the other. So this is the one where I cut all the way through. I'm gonna cut a little notch on the side and this is where the top of the lightsaber is going to uh, slide in. And then the other one, which I didn't get video of, but I actually drilled halfway into it and then I took a chamfer bit on my router and uh, chamfered it and then it's gonna seat right in. So you can kind of see right here on its side uh, how that's gonna work. Uh, and sorry, it's flickering again. So, sorry, two videos. Uh, so I didn't really know how I wanted to finish these up, but after watching New Hope and watching Luke Skywalker's uh, little speeder that he is in the, uh, in the Tatooine Desert, uh, I thought, hey, you know, that's kind of a cool basic shape. And so I decided to kind of make these that same shape as the front of that speeder, um, which, you know, may be only something I notice, um, but it's definitely, you know, a, a paying homage to the, to the movies. Uh, so cut it, sand it, pretty simple process on that. And I'm sure some of you will make fun of me for using this little drum sander on a drill press but I've had one of those rigid sanders and it just it just did not work for me it broke down quite a bit and I got frustrated just tossed it and I went back to these and they've never failed me um so might be kind of uh I don't know cheap but it works um so speaking of cheap and it works instead of finding a way to clamp these down to the bench to uh, chamfer the edges on them, I decided just to use double-sided tape, tape them to my bench, and then route the edges from there. And these are just getting a real simple uh, chamfer edge. I'll take off, you know, half the material on the first pass, and then I go back through with a finishing pass uh, because some of it did burn a little bit. Uh, and so I'll actually you know, chamfer this in two passes. Um, so let's watch that. Thank you. 
And now after all the sanding and shaping and everything else, we're finally gluing this thing up. Uh, and these don't need wedges or anything like that. These are actually really beefy tenons considering they're holding a very lightweight lightsaber. Um, I mean, let's face it, the whole thing was overkill. Uh, I could have done, you know, small dominoes in this and saved myself a whole lot of trouble. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment sometimes and I didn't mind sweating it out for a little project like this. Um, so you'll see, you know, this first one fits in really nice and easy. Oh, look at that. Chris knows what he's doing. Uh, and then you'll see on this next one, um, the glue swelled just a little bit in there. Um, and it doesn't quite go as smoothly, but that's okay. That's why, uh, we keep a rubber mallet in the shop. Um, and, but I was very careful cause I did not want to snap the, uh, the thinner portion of that off. So you can kind of see I'm hitting it on one side and it does just fine. It, it drove it home. Um, and then of course, you know, I flip it over and the other one goes in way more easy. So, you know, live and learn. I'll, I'll just try to make them a little bit better fit next time. So the tenons, I had left those a little bit proud for no other reason than just to make sure that they were going to be flush against the uh, back um, where it's going to you know, land against the wall. Uh, and I'd seen a couple people use this little trick where they take a piece of plywood and they notch it out and they have this bit and it just kind of flush trims or whatever you want to say uh, right to the surface. And I must have used too small of a bit and it actually was not the smoothest process. But hey, you know, now I know. So we got our uh, lacquer in the container here. We're gonna hook up the air, turn on the machine, and uh, obviously I'm gonna mask up because this stuff's uh, pretty toxic. All right, let's start. Oh, and by the way, I want to give a huge shout out to Fuji Spray. Uh, I've recently partnered up with them, and uh, they sent me this spray set up, the uh, Fuji Spray Q5 HBLP system. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in my description. Uh, but they're uh, super awesome folks over there, a lot of helpful uh, people, technical and everything. Uh, and they've just been super nice through this whole process. And I just wanted to show off what their spray systems can do in a small shop setting. So if you're in a small shop and, you know, you're considering something like this, you know, drop a comment and ask me any question that you have or hit me up on Instagram and uh, I'll be showing a lot more over there. But definitely want to show off that these are super useful. And I mean, the finish was far superior to anything I could get out of a rattle can. So again, thanks Fuji Spray. Now to just simply mount this thing on the wall. So I have these really cool metal giant screws that go into drywall and they don't need a uh, stud or anything especially not for anything this light uh, and then you just run a metal screw into that and you're on so uh, I kind of snug it up check it for level and I was pretty close but I think I hit it with the level and I had to knock it back um, so pretty easy uh, to mount this up and then we get to check and see how it looks 